That's what they do with us, they try and read bits of the Bible out, don't they, on camera? Shakes the earth from its place and makes its pillars tremble. I said, right, right, that's six. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You know, you've read the rest of it. Read the rest of it. Okay. And it, and it does not shine. It seals, it seals the light of the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waters of the sea. So, is that, is that an indication that the whole world is flat? The first part was, yeah. <laughs> that bit. So you just took one bit? Yeah, I took one bit, yeah. Okay. That's, so you tell me, what, what you, how will you just see that? The earth hasn't got pillars. So the earth doesn't have pillars. And the earth got pillars. I'm, I'm reading scriptures. It's not like just taking it literally when it's not meant to be literal, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. The guy, the guy needs to go to study the Bible. It's right, the guy's right, it's a parable. That's the part, that's fine, I might not understand it. You're here to help me understand it. I don't, I don't. That's fine, you don't understand that. No, I don't. So you, 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 you're understand it enough to say it's a parable. He's arrogant, isn't he? Yeah, he's really arrogant. Very. Bring that up, please. I can't watch anymore, mate. I've got no respect for that. I've got, I've got no respect for somebody who's treating our scripture with absolute dis, who's treating it disrespectfully, who, who, who hasn't even bothered to study things in the context. I've got no respect for it, and he tries to pull, pull himself off as some kind of debater and scholar. Yeah. And and the guy's just arrogant and ignorant, isn't he? He is, mate, he is. You know what I mean? What are you, what are you looking at, bro? I'm putting, the Bible says Earth is round. There'll be an answer for it. There always is the Bible. Oh. The Bible does not teach the Earth is flat. The Quran does. The Quran says he stretched it out like a carpet. When you look at a carpet on the floor, it's flat as a flute, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Carpets are not round, usually. You get a round carpet, but not in this case. Just, you're better off going to... Uh, just go to answer in Genesis and put. So All you have to do with that is bring some work down, and then when we see him, give it him. There you go, mate. If you're honest, read well, it. I mean, you can't. What's the point of doing it with someone like that who, who's really? He's there just. It is. If the verses that mention the earth's four corners do not refer to a flat earth, then what do they refer? Let me begin with Revelation seven verse one which speak of four angels standing on the four corners of the earth and restraining the four winds of the earth. Even the most ardent students of hyper-literal interpretation of the Bible acknowledge the frequent poetic elements and the use of imagery in the book of Revelation. This extends to the many occasions where, no where numbers appear in the book of Revelation. In this one verse, the number four appears three times. In each usage, the things mentioned are all instantly tied together, so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between each of the groups of four. So the four winds refers to the four directions from which four winds can come north, east, north, south, east and west. We often use this nomenclature today, such as saying that the wind is out of the west. The repetition of number four angel four four eight, 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 eight. Oh, basically if you Google just right, here we go. For the four corners of the earth is probably was an iodine in the Apostle John's time, much as it is in English today, referring to every distant location on the earth. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. This is the meaning from the context. So it, he's taking it literal when it's got more nuanced context than, than what he's actually saying. Yeah, iodines in one language can be difficult to translate into another language because a literal translation may be meaningless in the target language. 
Um, anyhow, let's, let's put that down. So, let, so, you give me your conclusion of what you've heard from Muhammad Hijab. Um, he's mistranslating the verses. He's not looked at what the Bible actually says about him or looked at what our position is. He's misquoting the position and he's putting his own not his own thoughts on it which are not which are totally out of context. He doesn't understand biblical language. He yeah. thinks he's reading the Bible as he would the Quran. He thinks the Bible is a literal book as the Quran as, as he looks at the Quran and we don't see in Christianity we believe the Bible is the inspired word of God but not there's there's parts there's there's a lot of the Bible where you can re retranslate it using poetic language and that's the way to look at it. If you look at it, if you're taking it everything literally literal, you're not going to understand the full the fullness of the body of the language of what it's referring to. Yeah, I mean, for an exercise in that is a Muslim, go and read the Book of Revelation literally, mm. <laughs> and then go and read it, looking at that kind of literature, the prophetic nature of that literature yeah and they'll get two different ways of looking at it correct and they're, they're looking at every bit of the bible from a literal perspective but there are yeah. some parts that are to be interpreted from the genre of the literature prophetic literature as its own way of being interpreted yeah poems are not interpreted literally you have to interpret them from a poetic uh, how they're understood poetically yeah and what muhammad ijab's doing is he's not He's not understanding the different genres of the literature within the Bible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And 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 basically, the guy. Well, I'm sorry to say, but I mean, he's just wasted. We've just wasted our time looking at what someone's been saying because at the end of the day, they don't know what they're talking about. Really, it's worse so. than Mansour, isn't it? It's worse than Mansour. He's a nicer version of Mansour, really. That's what he is, isn't he? He's a nice guy, but he doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. You know, he's... I don't even think he means well. He, 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 what's it called? Killing... He's trying to kill us softly, but it's not working because he's not going to work because we know we know what the Bible's talking about. You see, um, I'll give you an example. I spoke to a Muslim at Hyde Park, and he was, re he was interpreting the Song of Solomon, literally meaning Muhammad. It says, praise one, or... Mohammedan or whatever the word was mm. and I pointed out to him well the book of the Song of Solomon isn't um, a book of revelation it's poetic literature referring between the love of a man and a woman and that love between a man and woman is kind of pointing towards the love of God that kind of relationship we have you know it's intimate yeah. so it's not a book of revelation and I told him it, it can't be a revelation of Mohammed because it, the book isn't isn't connected to any kind of revelation. Yeah, yeah. And there's where the Muslim made the mistake by bringing that up in the argument. Yeah, yeah. And he still argued with me and I said, no, brother, I'm telling you, it's not a book of prophecy. It's not, it wasn't a book of prophecy, so it's nothing, it doesn't contain anything prophetic in it with regards to talking about... So Muhammad's definitely not there, you know. Yeah. So, uh, what gets me is the, is the cocky arrogance side, as if the cocky and as if he, as if he knows what he's talking about. And the, th the thing is, the, Chris the Christian guy at the end did call him out, but if he'd have been talking to me and you, we'd have let him ask a question, and then we'd have asked him a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him ask a question then. And he'd have been on the back foot, and we'd have been challenging him. Yeah. But he's just there, and he's not being challenged, is he really? And he's just getting away with it. And exactly. and that's why they, they pick people, choose people, they can manipulate, who will give them the chance to get on their soapbox and speak. Yeah. But he would never have got away with what he said there if he'd have had people like me and you or uh, DCCI or Bob the Builder or people who could challenge him. Yeah. So it shows that he's not strong in his position because he doesn't like to be challenged. Yeah. He's picking easy targets all the time. Exactly. So that's what they do, the Muslims. They pick the easy targets. And they, make, and they build straw men all the time as well. You know, they, build, they make this straw men argument and they expect us to defend it and we're left thinking hang on a minute this isn't our position so what can I defend <laughs> it's like when the Muslim said to us um, I want you to show me a, a, a word where Jesus says <laughs> yeah. I am God and you're not allowed to use the Bible <laughs> yeah that's a straw man in it and it's fullest it's like well um, we don't have any other literature where Jesus didn't speak to us except the Bible yeah just go through that again what that, that when that Muslim young Muslim guys come to us 
he, he says and what, and it, what he said and I, it, I, I, when he said it I was like gobsmacked it was it was like saying to a boxer right you've got you're having a fight in the ring with another boxer you've got to win the fight but you can't box back he can hit you but you can't hit him and it ties your arms <laughs> yeah and you're expected to win how can you win you can't so he was saying that we cannot we must these are the conditions he said was we must give a, a statement where Jesus says I am God worship me without using the Bible and when we go to use the Bible I don't want to see Matthew Mark Luke and John can you see how absurd it's crazy, isn't his it, proposition is to us? It's just absurd. That's why I wouldn't. I didn't want to speak to him. I said, you know what? Forget it. Yeah, I Whatever. mean, I, I was too, I was too kind with him, Mike. But you, you just walked away. But, but that's ridiculous. But that's the point. What that's what we're trying to deal with people who absurdity, absurdity. Really, they they won't. They basically, if Islam's the truth. They would debate us and discuss with us on equal terms in a fair way. Yeah. But they always manipulate something so that they can have the upper hand in some way. Yeah. Don't they? The Dawa teams, like, they'll either film it longer, they'll either get people to interrupt you, they'll either give straw man arguments. Anything, they'll do anything, but what you don't get is people coming to you and dealing with you in an honest, equal way. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. I'll just quickly answer this. Hi, Mo. Alright, I'll let it go. God bless you, folks. I'll be back.